Car Obsession is proudly supported by Carly and Draggy. Check out the video description to find out the latest discount codes. Japanese witchcraft. That's how I described the FK8 Civic Type R when I first drove it, all the way back in 2017. Not only is it one of the best hot hatches I've ever driven, but one of the best cars, full stop. As they say though, all good things come to an end. The FK8 has bowed out, making way for a new model. It's called the FL5, if you're nerdy like me and you like to speak in model code. Yes, you're right, I'm a hoot at dinner parties. But if you're a keen petrol head like me, you'll already know that. The recipe for this car isn't too far removed from the old car, that's by no means a bad thing. Think of the perfect family recipe for an apple crumble. You're not gonna muck about that, are you? Having said that, Honda is trying to perfect on what I would say was borderline perfection with the FK8. There's a Japanese word for this, Kaizen, which means continuous improvement. Think of it as Honda throwing in a bit of extra cinnamon into the crumble for added spice and flavor. What does that mean for the FL5 though? Well, to find out, I've come here to the Buttertubs Pass, a road that has been deemed by Jeremy Clarkson as England's only spectacular road. Now, before I hit to the road, let's address the exterior. It's no secret that the FK8 was as divisive as Marmite, but I'm sure many of you will agree the FL5 is a lot easier to take in. Thankfully, the Type R touches are still here. You have Type R badging, a sporty body kit, and of course, the obligatory large rear spoiler, which is actually lower than before and wider. I'd say overall, the look is a bit more grown up, a bit more cohesive, which should give the car a broader audience. But be warned, you will need deep pockets for this car because it will cost you over £49,000. Yeah, on that note, let's hit the road. As mentioned, the recipe for this car isn't too far removed from the old car. That means I get the same two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol as before. Well, I say the same engine, it has been fettled a bit. So instead of offering 320 horsepower, this now offers 329. Yes, you get an extra nine horsepower for your however much this extra cost is for this car. One of the reasons for the extra power and warning, I'm gonna get nerdy here, the blades and the turbine of the turbo, they have been reduced, the number of them have been reduced, and they've also been reshaped to make it more efficient. Kaizen, continuous improvement. As well as offering 300 and, oh, that's, oh, that's good through there. As well as offering 329 horsepower, this has 420 newton meters of torque. And what I love about this car is even though we are in 2023, this car is very old school because the power is sent to the front wheels via a six-speed manual, yes, manual gearbox. And that's how it should be done for a hot hatch. Of course, cars such as the Golf R and the Audi RS3 and of course, the A45 AMG, they have four-wheel drive systems and with that comes more weight. This car, as a result, is lighter than its rivals and that means better handling. Now, I mentioned the six-speed manual gearbox a few moments ago. Honda has tweaked this, and for me, that was a bit of a concern because in the FK8, the gearbox was pretty much perfection, and it did make you think, hmm, are Honda going to spoil something that was never broken in the first place? But I'm happy to report that the changes are as fantastic as they were maybe even better. I'd have to drive the FK8 back to back to really tell you. Now, interestingly, another nerdy feature for you, the gear knob is heavier compared to the FK8 and Honda states that is to optimize the feeling of the gear shift. Perhaps a bit of a gimmick, but it feels nice in the hand, so I'm not gonna complain. Of course, you want some performance stats. Silly of me. So, this will hit 62 miles per hour in just 5.4 seconds and the top speed believe it or not is 171 miles per hour i mean in a relatively sensible practical civic that seems obscene 
I'm afraid I've got even more nerdy details for you. So, the chassis, the suspension, they are more rigid compared to the FK8, and the exhaust is more free-flowing. That, of course, helps with power. The actual design of the exhaust has also been altered. So if you compare the look of this exhaust compared to the FK8, you will see there is a difference. Another difference is the size of the alloys. This car is running on 19 inches, whereas the old car was running on 20 inches, which I always thought was a little bit overkill for a hot hatch. Now you think, oh, smaller alloys, better ride. Mm, I'm afraid it doesn't quite work like that. Because this car is stiffer compared to its predecessor, the ride is firmer. It has been quite a long time since I've driven an FK8, but I'm happy to trust my muscle memory here, and this car definitely feels firmer. Like the old car, you have a choice of driving modes. You have Comfort, Sport, or Plus R. Actually, no, no you don't, because you now have a new individual setting. So Honda has seen some sense and gone, actually, you know what, let's give our owners the chance to fine tune their settings, which, in my opinion, they should have done with the FK8 to begin with. That means I can have everything in plus R, maximum attack, but importantly, I can have the ride in its comfort setting. And could you daily this car? Yes, you could. I will say that in sport and of course plus R mode, it is a bit too firm for the road. For most people, it may be okay. Well, for some people I should say, it should be okay. But for the majority of you, you'll want to put everything into plus R, but leave the ride in its comfort setting. Of course, this car has got adaptive dampers. So yes, the ride does change with the drive modes. I've got it in comfort at the moment and it's not too bad. I still think the old car is more compliant in its ride, but it's not a bone shaker like the i30N in N mode. Oh, that's enough to rip the fillings out of your mouth. No, you don't want that. Now, to go back to the exhaust, as much as it has been redesigned, I'm afraid the sound of it is still a bit I'm sorry, Honda, it's a bit tragic. Inside the car, it sounds pretty all right, if I'm going to be honest, but just like the GR Yaris, yeah, the outside sound is, um, it leaves a fair amount to be desired. So if you do want your hot hatch to um, make a bit of a racket, and be a bit more of a special occasion, then you may want to look at the i30N I mentioned a few moments ago, or perhaps the Focus ST. But yes, the Type R, the noise is a bit disappointing. But to be honest with you, that's one of very, very few things about this car that I do find disappointing. As a driver's car, yes, I know this has gone up in price, but it's, it's a fantastic driver's car. And I think compared to cars such as the Golf R, which you're a bit removed from the action because of course you've got the DSG gearbox. In this, you've got a proper manual gearbox, three pedals at your feet, all of which have got a sensational feeling. And I think this is as good as it gets for a hot hatch, really and truly. Yes, the noise is a bit disappointing, but apart from that, Oh, the driving experience is sensational. One thing I haven't mentioned are the brakes. They are brilliant. Their feedback through the pedal is firm. It's, it's perfect. It really, really is. The bite of the brakes, fantastic. And you can really modulate them nicely. The feeling is top notch. The steering is well weighted. It's responsive. The front end grip is very impressive. Around the 19 inch alloys you have Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres, and they are certainly earning their money today. They're also relatively wide for a hot hatch. They have a width of 265. The profile is 30, so yeah, uh, quite a low profile tyre. So watch out for those potholes. You're probably likely to get a puncture. Let's really put this car through its paces. The 
breaks are delicious. So, so crisp. As crisp as a winter's morning. Like gear change, it's... <laughs> if you want to know what a good manual gearbox should feel like, what a, what a good change should be, drive this car. There really isn't much I've experienced better. Maybe a, a Cayman GT4, but apart from that, for a manual gearbox, this is top notch. The chassis is sensational. It almost feels like the car knows what you want to do next. It's nigh on telepathic. Front end grip is so, so good. And you can, like the FK8, you can chuck this into corners thinking, no, I can't do it speed through there. You look down at the speedo, you go, oh, blimey. Yeah, I did just do that speed through there. Right, let's grab second. Really tight left-hander. A little bit bumpy. Now, yes, with this being front wheel drive, it does get a little bit scrabbly when the road condition isn't fantastic or indeed wet. But once the traction is there, this thing just flies. No wonder it's got a big ring on the back because I think I'm going to take off. <laughs> this, for me, is what hot hatches should be all about. The involvement, the engagement, just you and the machine as one and any other tired cliches you want to throw around at this stage. That rev matching is, oh, bellissimo, or whatever it is in Japanese. I don't know. Jeremy, you were right, this road is awesome. watch out for the sheep. The sheep are a bit of a problem, Jeremy. You might want to address that. Get some on your farm. Oh no, wait, that, that didn't pan out very well, did it? Never mind. The responsiveness from the engine, granted it doesn't make the most pleasing of noises, but you can't, you can't really argue with how alert it is. So don't, don't come closer to me, mate. Jesus, there's a big drop down there. You can't argue with the alertness of this engine. It's so punchy and the in-gear performance is really, really good as well. On the motorway in sixth gear, it will still pull. It's a lovely, torquey engine. But for me, I think the star has to be the manual gearbox. Long live the manual gearbox how hot hatches should be done. We're now celebrating 50 years of the Civic and 25 years of the Civic Type R. This car's now in its sixth generation. EK9, EP3, FN2, FK2, FK8, and of course this, the FL5. If you don't know what I'm saying right now, then those are model codes. Yes, more nerdiness for you, I'm afraid. I've actually owned an EP3, a JDM one, no less. And they are awesome cars. Over the years, of course, they've evolved. They're now turbocharged. That goes back to the FK2. And some would say, oh, it's ruined the VTEC experience, but really, it's just enabled this car to stick around for a bit longer makes the engine more efficient, kinder to the polar bears, keeps Greta happy, ish. And am I disappointed the tyre piles are turbocharged now? Well, have been for quite some time. No. <laughs> As you can tell by the smile that is painted upon my face, I'm having a whale of a time, even though I'm having to avoid kamikaze sheep. Honda, you've done so well with this car. 
yes, I know the price is a bit of a sticking point, but when you take take this car down a road like this, does the price enter your mind? No, it really doesn't. All I'm thinking about is just the engineering that's gone into this car. Simply epic. Now one thing I haven't mentioned at this point, and I can't believe I haven't done, are the seats. They are fantastic. A, I love the fact that they're red, very bold, very sporty, and again, like other elements of the car, they are bordering on perfection. They're really comfortable but supportive. You're sat nice and low in the car. The only downside is you don't get a heated function, which for a car that's almost 50,000 pounds does seem to be a little bit of a, uh, a tight move from Honda, but am I missing them right now? No. Would I rather have the squidgy leather heated seats of a Golf R or these seats? I think I'd have these seats, thank you very much. As much as this car has areas that are virtually perfect, the FL5 isn't without its flaws. As mentioned, the sound is still lacking compared to some rivals, and whilst the infotainment is better than before, it still isn't the greatest. Whilst the looks are more conservative, they are still likely to be too much for those used to the go anywhere ability of the Golf R. Then of course you have the price. Hot hatches are meant to be financially obtainable, but because this is a serious car, you're having to pay serious money. Still, at least you're getting a fair bit for your hard-earned cash, including keyless entry, wireless phone charging pad, front and rear parking sensors, reversing camera, LED headlights, adaptive cruise control, digital driver display, and Honda sensing safety systems. Better still, because it's based on a standard Civic, you get a decent sized boot offering 420 liters, and rear legroom is generous, even for taller people such as me, I'm six foot two. Okay, headroom isn't overly great, but I've had worse. There's some handy cubbies dotted around as well, although it would be nice to have some charging ports for the rear passengers. Wow, what a drive. What a road and what a car. Honda has taken what was great about the FK8 and made it even better for the FL5. Yes, I know the price is a sticking point, but rest assured, if you buy this, you are genuinely getting what I believe is one of the best driver's cars that you can get. Well, I say that, rumour has it that the UK allocation has now gone, so you'd have to search the classifieds and be prepared to pay over the odds. But that aside, let's just take a moment to soak in what could well be one of the last true hot hatches and maybe even the last Civic Type R. I mean, if it is to be the last, what a way to go out. <laughs> 